Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, another session of reading your fish tech charts. Um, I'm going to, in my last video, I said um, we're going to start breaking down in Yaka as it's one of the more difficult charts to read because of the very steep banks, etc., a lot of standing timber and, and what have you. So I've been really thinking how do we simplify? How do we speed up the process? Remember, I've always been on about situational awareness awareness excuse me now i'm on about time how do we how we do things quicker how do we how do we get onto those fish faster so the thing that we're looking at today is what depth should you be fishing i know our first video we spoke about that magic depth that the pros used in 2023 i think it was four to 12 feet was on on average but believe you me a lot of fish were caught a lot deeper a lot of fish so if you just restrict yourself to, to to 4 to 12 feet you're going to be in trouble especially when you get to a dam like Inyaka for example which could be crystal clear on the day and those fish middle of summer and those fish are going to be a hell of a lot deeper than 12 feet I can guarantee you that so what do you do again we go back to uh, uh, Johnny Schultz let me just start this video of this. It's, uh, it's his easy guide on how deep bass live offshore and thermocline explained. Go and have a look at this video. I'll put a link to it in the, in the description below. And please um, subscribe and like on his channel. Uh, you won't regret it. But I think most of you have already done that. So let's just have a quick little look-see at what uh, Johnny says here. What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So most of my recent videos have been about offshore fishing. And one of the top comments I get on every video is, how deep should I be fishing offshore on my lake? And this actually depends on the water clarity, the water temperature, and what time of year you're fishing offshore. And so in this video, I want to explain how you can determine how deep you need to be fishing offshore during all four seasons of the year and hopefully you'll be able to then figure out exactly where you need to look with your electronics and your Navionics maps to find a lot more fish this summer. So let's get into it. So first up, here's some general guidelines on how deep you should be fishing based on the water clarity of your lake. And these guidelines are based on my personal experience on the lakes that I've fished. And I've used about nine years of fishing experience to kind of develop these guidelines but they may not be perfect, so just keep that in mind. It's an awesome video. You've got to watch the whole video. I don't have time to sit and watch the whole video with you, but guys, go and have a look at this video. There's some excellent information in here. Um, so if you take a case like, for instance, at Inyakuna, where uh, when I was there, it was extremely clean. I don't know if that's normal. Uh, some of the locals can maybe um, in the comments can say, no, it's a dirty, it gets very dirty or whatever the case might be. But when I was there, it, it was very clean. Um, so I would put that as a very deep sort of uh, lake or dam to, you know, fish. I, I would really, you know, obviously target your shallows, your comfort zones, but I would push that deep limit quite sub substantially. Let's have a look what Johnny says about the thermocline. I'm going to jump the whole part, uh, but you guys, obviously, you must watch the whole video. They'll tell you all the information you need to know to figure out how bass relate offshore. But if you want a more scientific explanation of how a thermocline works, I'll link to video down below from Hat Cam Bass. And it's the video I actually used to refresh myself on all the specifics of a thermocline before making this video. So again, check that out in the link in the description. And if you want that deeper explanation, that's where you'll find it. So here's a very simplified version of what a thermocline looks like underwater. And the easiest way I can explain it is that the thermocline is a band of water between the surface of the water and the bottom of the lake where the oxygen level in the lake changes from having lots of oxygen to having less oxygen. And 
basically all the water on top of the thermocline has lots of oxygen and it's going to be warmer because it's exposed to the air and to the sun and the water below the thermocline is going to be colder and have less oxygen because it's further away from the sun and it's not close to the surface so there's no oxygen being put into the water from the air okay so now you guys know what how the thermocline plays a role in this whole thing um, I'm not going to go into how to find the thermocline on your unit. It's in this video. Johnny does explain it very, very well. So go and have a look there. So uh, the next time you get onto your body of water and you're going to say, okay, I want the thermocline to be part of my plan for the day. It's summer. It's hot. I think the thermocline is going to play a good role. The water's clean. Um, the fish are going to move deeper. Um, so definitely go and have a look and how to set your unit up on how to find a thermocline quickly and easily. I'm not going to do it in this video. So um, here's a screenshot that I took um, some some years back. And uh, this this is on Downscan. Um, Downscan isn't ideal for finding a thermocline, but if you've got a very strong thermocline, as in the case here, this was uh, in February, 2009 that I took this uh, screenshot you can see that thermocline clearly there at about 39 feet so let's call it 40 feet just to make life simpler oh 39 40 it doesn't really matter I suppose um, we know that anything on the water deeper than 40 feet is a waste of time we, we, nothing's gonna happen the fish are simply not there so how do we convert this information that we know about uh, fishable depth, uh, water clarity, and then of course the thermocline? How do we tie those three things into the Inyaka chart? Right, let's have at it. Charts in more options. Okay, we're going to start here. We're going to go to Inyaka Dam. Okay, there it is. There. Okay, guys, a lot of water. Here is a lot of water. So now you say to yourself, right, what has Johnny just told us? Clean water. So we, we, we must look at quite deep water. Where's the thermocline? Let's use my screenshot. The thermocline could be wherever. You guys are going to have to find it out. But let's say that screenshot of mine that's on the screen um, was here. And you drove over it and you found it at 39 feet. What do you need to do? You need to set where, do you, where don't you look any deeper or any further. So what? we go into our options, we go to chart options, we go to our categories, right on the left hand side of the screen next to, next to depth area, we push that there, we turn them all off, um, no, we turn them all off, and we're going to say we want to target 0 to 3, 3 to 6, Six to nine, nine to twelve, and just for good measure, let's throw in that twelve to fifteen as well. Okay, twelve to fifteen. Okay, where do we cut off? Where do we not go any deeper? Past thirty nine feet, remember? That is your border. So anything past that, don't even look at it. Let's see what the chart looks like. Can you see what, what we've done now? Anything from the red up to the yellow is going to be our fishable depth. The yellow is your 39 foot mark plus. We know we are not going past that. That is max. We are not going past that. So let's say 
you said, okay, what can I find in this range now? It's a very hot day. The fish have moved a little bit deeper. They've moved out of that magical uh, 4 to 12 foot range. What can I find in that deeper range? You can leave this on. We know we're in that sort of uh, don't go past 40. We want to be under 40. So then you go back, you go to Nyaka, you go to your Ultra HF. And there we go. What can I find in less than 40 feet that I can work with, that I can target? And then you start going. And here we go. Straight away, straight off, off the bat, you can immediately see there's a lovely, there's a lovely ledge here. So you can mark that. Uh, this 20 to 40 now is our target sort of zone, if we can call it that. There's all sorts of things here. We don't want to go deeper than 40. We know that the thermocline, the fish are not going to be below that. There's some rocks here and a little inlet of sorts. You can mark that. Um, again, stay under the 40 foot mark. Don't look past 40. Um, there's all sorts of things here. Ledges and things you can mark there. Um, I don't want to spend too much time doing this this is something that you guys okay there we go okay wow okay that is a must okay it's at the it's it's, it's right on top of that thermocline if the thermocline was like my screenshot i tell you what that would be a very very good spot to fish deep uh, i don't know whatever techniques you guys use drop shot ned rigs whatever to get down to that sort of depth that might be a very, very good spot right there to go and have a little look-see what's going on. What you do then is, let's just go back to our dam. You see, you're still within your, your frame there. Guys, look how big this dam is. Kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of, of dam. What I've just showed you now, in a couple of minutes, we, we identified a key, key spot. If those conditions are ticked, clear water, deep thermocline, that's a good spot. We found it quickly. If we go through this entire chart, start from the left, the right, whatever, and you just follow that pattern, that basic guideline, and you go through it. You are going to literally find dozens of hotspots. Then it's going to be up to you to categorize them as super hotspots and not so good hotspots. So rather than just going down the bank endlessly all along with, with your trolling motor, running out of day, running out of time, running out of battery, etc., that's not going to be a problem because you're only going to be targeting key key areas guys what I'm thinking of doing um, and it was actually the Sinyaka chart that got me thinking about it um, to do a walkthrough on it with you in a video like this we'll be here for three hours three four hours um, I'm thinking of creating a walkthrough I'll take the time and I will create a walkthrough based on, for example, this knowledge that we know now that we discussed in this video. And I will create a walkthrough for this. Call it a cheat sheet for the Inyaka chart. And you know what? You guys can buy it. I'll make it available. As an example, I will do Inyaka Dam. I will create a cheat sheet for Inyaka Dam that you guys can purchase, put it into your unit and view all those spots. And I will add as much information as I can on there. Maybe at a later stage, we could even speak to a, a tackle supplier and some really good fishermen and say, right, this type of spot, this sort of depth, what would you fish here? And the guy will say this, this and this, this is how I fish it. And maybe we can put all that information together. You know what, we might have just Right now, we might have just brainstormed an absolutely fantastic fishing product. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Is this a good idea? Would you guys like a 
cheat sheets for your fish tech charts. I think it's a concept. It's something that could possibly work. Anyway, guys, uh, please don't forget um, the subscribe and share and all that story. But uh, most importantly, please have a look at Johnny Schultz's video. I said there's going to be a link below. And uh, watch the whole whole video, even if you've got to put it on a slightly higher speed so it doesn't take quite as long. It's not a very long, long video, but uh, you'll definitely benefit from it. And uh, guys, I will see you next time. We're going to continue breaking down Inyaka. Thanks for watching.